Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to, to the workshop. We are uh, on stage. My name is Miguel de Cara. I am part of this uh, project, Best for Soil. Um, to some extent, uh, mm, I have some responsibility on the organization of this workshop. It is my pleasure to thank you for joining us today. This is uh, a trending topic. This is a uh, real worry for all of us. This is soil health. Uh, in some moments of this, uh, this workshop this morning, there were about 190 people uh, joining together the different sessions uh, of, the, of the workshop in the Mediterranean countries. And I am sure that you could, uh, could get new ideas, information, and new challenges to improve the soil health of your the health of your soil. For many of us, this is the first time, the first contact with the best for soil, and it is our aim to support you on starting experiences and practices linked with soil health. Best for soil is available for one more year, and we invite you to join us, our website, and our network. Don't hesitate to contact your facilitator, your national facilitators today. You have met. Uh, you have met uh, your facilitator. Now we are go. We are moving to the different countries participating in the workshop, and we will uh, start uh, with the feedback compilation from the countries. Here is Stefan Dubac, our specialist on surveys. So please, Stefan, you can take the floor. Thank you, Miguel, for the introduction. Hello from Switzerland, and it's snowing here in Switzerland this morning. Dear participants wow. and moderators, during the last 30 minutes, you discussed about the best for soil videos, the fact sheets, and the database. Your opinion and your experience are very important for us. Only two which are user-friendly and helpful for you as facilitator and moderator are good tools. With your help, we can improve them. Thank you a lot for your input. Now we would like to summarize the most important remarks about the evaluation part with the videos, fact sheets, and the databases. I will call now from each country the moderator to tell us in two minutes the key sentence from the evaluation part. We start with Jose, then Maria, Charlotte, and Ross. Jose, hello to Spain. I will call now Jose. Hello, Stefan. Hello. How uh, you, what is best for soil videos, the fact sheets, and the database? Database, please, Jose. According to the answer from the attendees in Spain, there is in general the, the opinion that all videos are correctly translated to, to Spanish and that the videos are in general highly comprehensible and useful. So there is a guarantee of a smooth knowledge transfer from research to, to practice. In addition, they feel that the fact sheet are a good complement to the information provided by the videos. In this case, uh, regarding to databases, attendees think that this support tool provides tailor-made information that is relevant for growers and advisors. Attendees also hope that the databases be expanded with more pathogens and crops, and that databases remain in time fully accessible to everyone. The translation of some definition of pathogens database legends still needs to be corrected, but this is a, a minor correction. In general, attendees are really enthusiastic for the website and the material and tools provided in the website. They appreciate it very much. In general, the website is very well appreciated. Okay, thank you very much, Jose. Thank you, Stefan. We will go to Italy, and I call now Maria for the summary, please. 
Good morning uh, to everybody. Uh, good morning to Stefan and to Miguel. Uh, we had a very interesting uh, session, very participated. And uh, concerning uh, the best soil uh, tool, uh, we found uh, a very high interest uh, on uh, the whole health soil uh, issue and uh, the different tools uh, organized and prepared. Um, and uh, like uh, uh, Jose already anticipated, uh, even uh, in Italy we found a very high interest and appreciation for uh, video, which are very friendly use uh, and uh, very clear to transfer the main uh, issue of, uh, of uh, the uh, practice uh, is that Vespo Soil uh, want to uh, disseminate and diffuse uh, largely. So uh, that is for sure a very uh, useful uh, uh, system uh, to spread the knowledge uh, on uh, these uh, technical practices. Uh, unfortunately, many of the attendees of this section hadn't uh, uh, the time enough to check uh, carefully all uh, the different uh, uh, fact sheets uh, and, uh, and video. Uh, consequently, we end up and databases. Consequently, we had only a uh, few uh, feedback uh, directly, but uh, I am confident uh, that uh, they will look carefully on the website uh, and uh, we will collect further uh, um, uh, answers and further reactions uh, later on during the day and, uh, and uh, tomorrow. Uh, so that is uh, from uh, the Italian section. Okay, thank you very much, Maria. And we go further to France. I call now Charlotte. Hi. Hello to France. Hello, Miguel. Good morning, Stefan. So in France, we have 68 particip participants to the meeting. So it's very nice. And we have very good feedback concerning the videos. They are very clear, very informative, and very fun. So this is very, very nice news. Concerning the fact sheets, we have no really feedback because I think it's a new tool for everybody. So they look, they use for the first time. So they will give us their feedback in a few days, I think. Globally, we have a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and everybody is really happy. Okay, thank you very much, Charlotte. And now, last but not least, we go to Cyprus. And in Cyprus, there is Kipros, the moderator from this morning. Hello, Kipros. Yeah, we already had a little problem this, this morning. Maybe he's not really able. I will wait. Uh, a short moment. Yeah, I see now he will join us in a second. And we are happy if you give uh, positive feedbacks to the uh, to the tools, but also give us um, the feedbacks how we can improve now these these tools also. So now, Kipros, you are here. Hello. Hello. Just <laughs> can you case. give us a short summary, please? Just some technical problems, that's why I connected at this moment. No so, problem. Hello to everyone. Uh, unfortunately for me, I had no comments or particip from the participants. Uh, I actually expected when I showed the Best for Soil webpage and I explained the databases and their use, I expected some comments and questions. I just had one question that it was not so relevant with the web page. One, one guy asked, uh, how can we know what type of pathogens do we have in our soil? I answered him, of course, but it, it was not commentative on the web page itself. Uh, I, I was certainly raise the issue again in the next session in order to raise their aware that are aware of a bit more and see if we have any positive reactions. I, I promote to register twice in the beginning and in the end. Maybe that would be helpful in the long run, but 
for the time being, I, I didn't have any constructive comments. Okay. Thank you, Kipras. You are welcome. And now this afternoon, we will ask you again two questions about the Best for Soil projects, our different questions. And um, I'm happy if you can discuss and also make some remarks on the chat, maybe, or, or direct with the facilitator. So I give now by, uh, the floor back to Miguel. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you very much, uh, dear friends, for, uh, for the summary regarding the, the use of uh, the best for soil materials. Well, this uh, online multilingual workshop was a real challenge for all of us. Uh, today, we started with uh, some uh, technical issues, but the connectivity in the workshop has been improved as, uh, as the, the workshop has been advancing through the, through the morning. Now, uh, I, I am happy that uh, many of us, we are joining this time in the stage because we have uh, accomplished our, our objective that was to, to to share uh, at the same time different practitioners, different experts in the topics related to uh, soil health uh, in the same place. This is virtually, but we are in the same place now. This is a challenge and uh, the improvement of soil health in our soils is uh, also a challenge. The first topic uh, of our workshop is compost. Compost now is a common word for all of us, for the most of the growers, but I can remember 30 years ago, no one knows, no one knew about uh, compost. It was something that only some organic strange growers use it. Now compost is a, is a factor that can play uh, a crucial role in the improvement of the soil health. Also, in the control of some soil-borne diseases and soil-borne soil -borne nematodes. There are uh, many studies on uh, uh, improving the quality of the compost in order to get suppressive compost to be added into the soil. I have joined at this morning the different sessions and I have seen intense discussions and also the interaction between professionals in the same country it is our aim that you get connected. Uh, please use Best for Soil to find new ways to improve your studies, to improve your work, to improve your practices in Best for Soil. There is a lot of information. We face it that the, the most of the information, of the scientific information, was or is written in English. Uh, now here, today, we are exchanging information in English, but also we have made a big effort on translating all the best for sale materials and also on adding the subtitles to the videos because we want to share our, our knowledge and we want to improve our soils all together. Uh, in this morning, we have uh, shared with you three very wonderful presentations from a researcher, from an advisor, specialist advisor, and from a farmer, or more than a farmer, is Alfred. Now, we have the chance to follow on the discussions and to continue with the questions and with the uh, uh, conversations linked to this composed presentation. I would like to ask each of the facilitators to summarize the, the main topics that they have discussed in their countries and I, I would like to start with uh, Jose Ignacio following the same, the same uh, order than, than was used before. Jose. I'm so sorry. Hello, Miguel. 
Hello, Mediterranean College. A fruitful and intense Spanish session this morning. We are pretty happy because we had uh, over 60 and 70 attendees during the, the session. It has been clearly addressed that compost is a trending topic and the role of compost in the fertility of soil is more than promising, it's reality. It's a reality. However, some concerns were discussed in our session with different questions that have been arising regarding compost. We have talked about indicator of compost quality, its maturation or microbial di diversity. This uh, among other topics. We have had a very interesting conversation about priming in seeds and the possibility and complexity of using compost strat to favor the first stage of plant development. Some doubt have been solved. There has been a different question. For example, they ask, can compost be applied individually at sowing? The conclusion was that the proportion must be taken into account. Compost is not used alone. There are proportion formulations that are the most useful, even through tea of compost. Another one was during the maturation of the compost, does the biological load change or increase? As the compost matures, the microbiota of the compost decrease quantitatively, but this does not imply that the biodiversity we are looking for decreases. A compost that is in an active phase, initial, not madurate, can be phytotoxic and it's necessary to, to have a, 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 a complete maduration so that the compost uh, exerts its performance correctly. In addition to some issues that have been left pending to, for a plenary discussion, for example, an attending want to know if warm, he said, warm humus is produced with manure. And one of the problem is that transport makes it more expensive. The vegetal remains or debris of the farms could be used to make a compost. This question, we would like to have a, a response from, from Alfred. We know he is with us in this session. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hello, Alfred. Can, uh, my name is Alfred. I'm, I was already presenting the uh, information about composting. So, Jose, could you summarize the questions uh, very shortly for me again? Because I couldn't, I couldn't hear everything. Um, because of uh, warm humus, the vermicompost is produced uh, mainly with manure. One of the main problem is that the transport make it more expensive. Here in um, in Almeria, there is lot of uh, vegetal debris at the end of the crop season, and we want to know if it's possible to a mixture with the manure of this uh, debris. Yes, uh, yes, you see, definitely it's possible. Uh, manure is a very good resource for vermicomposting, so it's very easy to do the uh, to manage the vermicomposting process. But it is still possible to do that also with uh, vegetable debris. And the more diverse your resources are, the more diverse your input material is, the easier it is to uh, do a vermicomposting process. What I would recommend is uh, to use uh, thermophilic composting together with vermicomposting because then you can uh, reduce the pressure of the pathogens that are maybe still uh, in, the, in the vegetable debris. So with the, with the hot period, you kill the, the spores of, of uh, any 
uh, plant diseases. And then the compost is vermi is uh, fed uh, to the earthworms, and then you can produce the vermi compost. Thank you very much, Alfred, for your comment. In addition, I think it's uh, it's really clear now with with your answer. In addition, some conclusions have been reached, such as the uh, by sterilizing the soil, the suppressive capacity of the soil is lost and the possibility that this microbiota acts as a firewall. We lost the, this firewall. As a result of this, uh, that uh, debate has arisen where a college points out the importance of the area in which the crop is developed. Since in Almeria they don't, they don't have organic matter in the area, they provide the leaves and the grass of the area itself in this case, in olive growing. In Almeria, it's cultivated in sandy soils, and it's very different from the greenest areas of other places. It's very punicid and almost a sterile soil, and it will be necessary to focus more on studies to give life to the soil again. It's possible to enrich and activate it in the long term through compost and it's magnificent option to start recovering this soil or also to take into account the possibility of contacting nearby areas that have organic matter to make compost. Um, Alfred, uh, do you have um, something to, to apport to this discussion, please? Yes. Uh... My recommendation is, uh, and, and we see that not only in the southern areas of Europe, we see that all over Europe, the demand for thermophilic compost is, is hugely increasing. And, and the reason is that some of the compost uh, resources are used for bioeconomic uh, purpose, or they are used for heating, for example, or uh, they are used as an organic fertilizer. But uh, what you can, I'm sorry... <laughs> That was my fault. Uh, what you uh, so in I think the next five to ten years the demand for thermophilic compost will increase. So all over Europe it will be difficult to get good quality compost. And my recommendation is, or, or what I think could be a solution on that, is that we produce high quality compost, just a small amount, and then use it in a clever way. For example, use it as a seed treatment to cover the seed with the microbial, the microbes with the biomicrome of the from from uh, the the microbiome from the from the earthworm, for example, and then let the root when it grows down uh, be infected by this by this uh, microbiome, and the plant when it when when it grows the root down into the soil, it transports the microbes down and it feeds the microbes at the same time. So this would be a method to use very, very little compost, not so much for uh, adding organic matter into the soil, because for that reason you need you need large amount. But if you are only going for, for the biodiversity, for example, then this would be a good method to, uh, to use only little amount of high quality compost and, and use it in a, in a smart way. And thank you. The, the second question that or uh, th that popped up that you said, Jose, was also that uh, uh, about the uh, if if you have a very sandy soil with nearly no organic matter, if it's good to use compost, I think it's good to use compost because the compost or the vermi compost is already quite stable. So because of the high temperature of the soil, it doesn't it doesn't get burned. So burned, it's not, not like fire, but oxygenized, oxygenized uh, uh, that fast. Mm -hmm. And if you put raw manure, for example, in, it's, uh, it's uh, consumed by the microbes very fast and nothing is left. If you use compost or vermicompost, it, that would be more stable in the soil, I think. 
Thank you very much, Alfred. Really interesting your comments, your lessons. Uh, for us, uh, it's enough. Um, by the moment, we don't have more more questions. We leave pending for the final document that we we will prepare after the the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose. Now let's see what uh, are the, the main uh, the main topics in the Italian session. Please, Maria Grazia. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miguel, for uh, for the for the word. Well, as I said already before, uh, also in the Italian section, we had a very interesting debate. Um, the compost uh, composts uh, is for sure an important uh, an important uh, uh, aspect, uh, and that in, and it is a very important issue uh, for. Uh, soil health uh, in uh, in general uh, for the uh, of course uh, nutritional point of view but uh, also for the suppression of uh, of pathogens and this uh, second aspect uh, was something probably more new uh, in in our in our uh, scenario compared to that uh, uh, linked to the nutritional aspects that uh, is more uh, well, well known, I would say. Uh, concerning this uh, this point, uh, uh, we found uh, some uh, similar uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, developed on the same topics as uh, Jose Ignacio said before. So uh, the debate was very high on uh, the aspect related to microbial and the pool of microbial within compost and their effect on pathogens and. Uh, uh, many were the questions uh, that uh, were discussed. Some were uh, already answered by some uh, experts uh, and advisors uh, that talk in, in the video. But uh, uh, still, uh, there are the interest uh, to uh, go a little bit more uh, deeper on uh, some specific point. Uh, for example, uh, one uh, first question uh, was uh, addressed uh, to uh, Dr. Suarez and Fuchs, so I don't know who can better answer, uh, related to the fact that it could be possible to have uh, more extended detail on the usefulness of a different kind of compost for their suppressive effect on different pathogens. And this in particular is uh, related to uh, the uh, microbial uh, community that can be uh, Included or present in uh, in, uh, in some uh, compost, uh, according to also the uh, input uh, of the compost itself. I, I don't know if uh, uh, Dr. Suarez could finally uh, join us in in stage on the stage, or uh, or uh, Dr. Fuchs maybe. I don't know who of them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I can. Uh, <laughs> we can answer to this point uh, later on, or in a written way, maybe. Do you want that they go on with another oh, grant? Okay. Okay. So I'm not an expert in in pathogens, um, and I think we really have to look it up and and uh, answer it written in the written proposal. But uh, what what we have to say is that uh, a compost is not a plant protection system itself. So it helps to establish a healthy. Uh, microbiome of uh, and, and and diversity of microbes in the soil. It suppresses some disease, but that is not not guaranteed and not always true for each type of compost. So, with every type of compost, you have to check if it suppresses a certain disease or not. You cannot automatically say, "Okay, 
For this disease, uh, it's clear compost does the job. So you always have to look at it uh, more in detail. For general soil health, it is it is very good a product, but for specific pathogens, we always have to look into the details. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this answer, and maybe uh, Dr. Suarez and Cooks uh, can uh, detail even more on this point. But uh, you uh, you uh, touched also another aspect, in fact, that came out from our discussion related to the. Um, uh, the recognition or how to collocate in effect uh, the biological suppression aspect uh, of uh, compost uh, in the legislation frame if uh, there is uh, this kind of uh, uh, questions or if anyway as uh, you already said uh, the suppressiveness effect uh, is a side effect of the compost and they cannot be recognized in a in any way as a, a phytosanitary material uh, I, I guess that that uh, Dr. Suarez is uh, also is uh, is here in the in this stage. So if if you are able to to repeat the question, uh, Maria Gracia, well, the, the question was linked to the characterization of the suppressiveness of different type of compost uh, regarding the original material for the compost. Exactly. Exactly. So, including uh, the microbiological uh, uh, indication related to hmm. just trying to get it then i have another question uh, just tell me how do you think uh, to go on well. So if uh, yeah. if you yeah. want uh, that I go on with another point, yeah. Uh, yeah. because another very very important aspect uh, that was uh, very crucial uh, in the discussion uh, was uh, related to the quality, as already mentioned, even uh, from Jose Ignacio, um, and. Uh, we had the luck uh, to have uh, the participation also of uh, a, represent a representative of an Italian consortium of compost producers that uh, uh, spoke, uh, uh, that explained us many aspects on the legal quality parameters uh, that uh, are regulating the compost to define uh, uh, equality of, of the compost. But, uh, uh, this uh, is a legal uh, aspect uh, that uh, is accomplished by the producers uh, and uh, it doesn't give, uh, give uh, to the farmer clear indication on uh, what the kind of compost can be preferred to another uh, if uh, the quality parameters are both uh, so satisfied, uh, how can be recognized for its uh, specific purpose and objective, okay? So, uh, the question is, how can a farmer recognize a good quality of a compost and which parameter have to be checked for the highest effect of uh, pathogen suppression by the farmer? Because uh, uh, there is, of course, uh, a, a quite clear defined legislation on, on this uh, topic, but uh, uh, this kind of uh, parameter legally uh, described are not enough to give uh, a clear indication to farmer how to select a very high quality compost. Uh, and uh, it was uh, even uh, funny because uh, the representative of uh, compost producer said that uh, uh, is more related to a direct contact with the producer itself uh, and uh, to trust uh, their uh, uh, capacity to develop a good quality compost. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, this is an issue and uh, I think that uh, uh, we can try uh, to help uh, the farmer 
uh, not just the Italian one. I think that this is a quite a wide uh, uh, general problems uh, uh, in order to um, give uh, uh, advice to the farmer how to uh, check for the highest quality of the compost to achieve uh, the uh, better results for soil health. So it's a, a general question, not addressed to one expert in particular, but maybe to all uh, best for soil consortium. Well, here is Jax, uh, folks. Hello, Jax. Uh, finally, we could connect with him uh, with this uh, technical technical issues. Maria Gracia, so. Uh, I, I cannot tell in French. I, I hope that uh, uh, Dr. Fuchs can understand me in English. Uh, well, uh, I have two, two questions, uh, if you can try to answer. One is, uh, uh, is it possible to have uh, uh, some more details uh, on uh, the usefulness uh, of the different uh, kind of compost uh, for their effect? for their suppressive effect on the different pathogens. There is some uh, specific relation uh, concerning this point. Excuse me. Can you hear me? I, but there is something else uh, which is uh, speaking. I heard something else. Uh, I so, don't know. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Do you want that I write uh, the sentence in the chapter? So maybe that can be uh, useful for you to understand. This, I, I wrote down that the sentence, the, um, the, the, the question in... Uh, I, can you read it? Uh, I, I don't know if Jax can yes, listen, listen but uh, I heard always uh, two or three people in uh, parallel so it's very difficult to understand yet it's better so about you ask about um, how to max uh, do you hear me yeah yes uh, that pr pr probably do you need to close the different browsers in your computer Jax is You ask ab about how to make the evaluation. I have just one which is going on. Uh -huh. okay. I, do you hear me? Yes. No. Okay. okay. So, um, about the evaluation of the compost quality, it is uh, it is uh, it is uh, a comp it is a complex uh, question uh, because there is dif different parameter which is oh I I heard I heard second uh, uh, to. I, I heard different people in the in the so I will I will try to speak without um, the, the phone. So um, first, the type of compost is very important. If we have uh, woody compost or if we have uh, uh, compost from manure or uh, warm vermicompost and so on. But the most important is how we uh, we manage the, the the process. So with the same type of uh, material and the same the same system, we can produce good and bad uh, compost. So the process is very important. And to make the evaluation, there is some uh, simple test to make a first first evaluation, just look the compost and with uh, how well, it is smelling and so on, it is, uh, it is uh, possible already to have some indication about the quality of the compost. And then there is some simple test 
like uh, uh, the test I explained in the in the video in uh, Best for Soil about uh, nat mineralized nitrogen analysis. So we can uh, see a lot of uh, information about the quality if it is young or if it is uh, mature or if it is. Um, uh, he has a bad process because of a not enough oxygen in it. So we can, with very simple tests, evaluate uh, this. And after to choose the compost we want to use, we have to think about it, what we want exactly. Do we want more to bring, to bring um, uh, shortly disposable uh, fertilizer in the soil, or we will want uh, mostly to improve the soil structure or to improve the, the supersivity of the disease. And uh, um, we know that some composts that are like uh, uh, vermicom good vermicompost or uh, uh, horticultural compost, so it means uh, green manure uh, compost, are mostly more suppressive for disease as uh, manure compost. But manure compost brings more uh, fertilizer to the plant. So there is a lot of different aspects. Uh, so um, I don't know if I can, uh, if you understand this. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, thank you for for your answer. That is, uh, in in fact, uh, what uh, we uh, was asking. But uh, uh, it would be very useful uh, in for our platea if uh, it would be possible to uh, maybe uh, organize uh, some additional uh, uh, information available for uh, for our uh, our farmer in order to give uh, some further in details uh, on, uh, on, on the recognition of, of the quality aspects uh, of, uh, of the compost, mostly uh, for the uh, suppressive uh, effect that uh, they can have on, uh, on the pathogens into the soil. Yes. Yes, so what, uh, what is important, what we are doing here in Switzerland or in France or things like this is to make uh, uh, some uh, workshop with the farmer to, uh, to explain it because we have to see, we have to smell, we have to, and it is difficult uh, on theory to explain all these things. And so the best one is to organize some workshop with an uh, interested farmer. We make this in, uh, I make this uh, around the world, so uh, I could also come in Italy or in Spain to do this if you want. And uh, uh, we can make some theory, but the, 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 the major thing is the experience and to, to smell and to look and to see the different as aspects on a compost plant. Thank you very much. It would be very interesting and uh... Uh, we can try to organize uh, maybe something together with Miguel uh, to to have uh, one uh, okay. uh, maybe uh, specific uh, workshop uh, on this uh, topic uh, in in Italy. Uh, it would be very interesting. Uh, so I accept uh, your uh, your proposal and I invite you since now to to have uh, one opportunity next year. Uh, wishing that uh, with the COVID uh, restriction, we can have uh, a physical meeting to have this kind of opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think that uh, this uh, aspect on the quality of the compost is one of the main issues that uh, we discussed to today, together with the other uh, point uh, that I already anticipated, uh, the different kind of uh, uh, application, uh, uh, including uh, the tea compost uh, uh, and so on. Um, but uh, we have a uh, very short time left, so I leave uh, the, the, the place uh, to the colleague of the other section. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much, Maria Grazia. Uh, really uh, hot, hot topics. Uh, this question uh, of the standardization of the methods to to decide the quality of the compost, not only for the fertilizer uh, action of, of the compost, but also for the for the present of uh, supersive activity for the compost, but also as someone in the, in the chat mentioned, uh, uh, the the absence of uh, soil-borne pathogens in the compost that it's 
it's crucial for for this for the health of the of the plants. These questions needs uh, an improvement for sure in Europe. And probably now we are learning different technical things, but uh, probably we will need also these legal aspects to be to be covered. Now, uh, despite of the 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 amount of uh, topics and questions that have been posted in the chat by the the French facilitators. And uh, now I, I, I give you the, the, the word to, to Charlotte or to Marie to, to explain or to summarize this, uh, these questions in the, in the French session. Please. Thanks, Miguel, for the introduction. So, um, in France, as in Italy, we have a lot of questions about the quality of compounds. Thanks to Jack, we have a lot of answers. Uh, secondly, we have a lot of questions about the vermicompost because in France we we not use really this uh, this kind of compost. So we have the first question about the relationship between the quality of vermicompost and the quality of veg vegetable or pollution. And um, people want to know if there are a real difference between the quality of vermicompost and the phenol quality of fruits, vegetables, or productions. So maybe we can have the answer with that, Fred? Hello, Charlotte. Uh, you wanted, I hope I did understand the question correctly. You wanted uh, to to understand the difference or, or the difference in quality or the difference in characteristics between uh, vermicompost and thermophilic compost? No, no, no. We, know to, we want to know if there are an impact of vermicompost on the, on the quality of vegetables, production, strawberry, uh, or other, with vitamins, secondary metabolites, or other. Yeah, there is there is an interesting publication uh, which was uh, I don't know it's called uh, vermicomposting technology. It's a it's a book, and and there are a lot of different studies on on such topics uh, like the effect of uh, of uh, vermicompost, and and there is another publication that's called uh, uh, it's about the the microbiome. So the diversity of microbes affecting the quality of uh, of herbs, medicinal herbs, and there is there there is one publication that also says that uh, the use of vermicompost does uh, have an effect on the quality of vegetable or on on, on herbs in in particular uh, for the, the the working agent of medicinal herbs, for example. So it does increase. Uh, certain certain uh, chemical substances in 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 the plants. So I think this is also true for uh, for for vegetable production. Thanks. So we have another question about vermicompost. It's um, where we can buy a throne to make himself the vermicompost. I think I friend can answer this. So the question is where you can buy earthworms to produce vermicompost. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look for for a certain uh, vermicomposter or earthworm growers, uh, and you have to be careful about the species because uh, in in Austria, for example, we have sixty five different species of earthworms, and uh, the more you go south, for example, in Italy, you already have one hundred more than one hundred forty different species of earthworms. So you divide these species in three groups, and 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 the group that we are looking for is uh, is called uh, epigaic earthworms. So earthworms that live very shallow in the surface area. It, they do not even go into the soil. They live in the mulch in the organic layer on top of the soil, and and a typical earthworm is Asenia fetida or Asenia andrei, which are used for vermicomposting. So please don't buy any Lumbricus terrestris, for example, these these large uh, large ones, but the small, the dark ones. Uh, but if you go to a company that is doing vermicompost, I'm sure you will get the the the, the right earthworms. You can buy some earthworms. But don't buy buy the the bait, the fishing bait that the fishermen uh, buy for for sport fishing because they are usually not the, the right ones. Thank you. 
And we have a last question about the vermicompass. It's um, how we can use vermicompass in uh, foliar parts. Can you spray? Can you frequency amount? Again, how you can use vermicompost in? Uh, in foliar parts of plants. Can you spray this on foliar uh, parts? The compost tea, for yeah. example. Yeah, in, in fluid way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good uh, way to use vermicompost because vermicompost has the disadvantage that it's quite, quite expensive compared to thermophilic compost. And the more, uh, the, the, the less uh, vermicompost you have to use, the better it is uh, because of the less expensive it is. And one way is to produce compost extracts or compost teas and and to, to extract the microbes uh, out of the vermicompost and to multiply them with, uh, with a compost tea brewer, for example. And then you can spray the vermicompost uh, and, and use it uh, for, for plant strengthens. Or you can even uh, cover your seed uh, and, and then dry it back again and then immediately seed it like you would do it uh, with uh, rhizobias, with, with legumes, for example. So it's the same process. It's, it's very easy to do in practice. Uh, every farmer can do it. And you can reduce the amount of vermicompost that you have to use to one liter per hectare at the end, if you use it for seed coating, for example. But you still have a beneficial effect because it's directly there. Uh, the microbes are directly there where, where they have the best, the best use. So I think it's all for the friends because the other question are same than in Italy or in Spain. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you, Alfred, for the for the explanations. Uh, I think it's time for the last of the facilitators. Uh, Gibros, please, can you get in? Hello again. So. As I said earlier, I didn't have almost zero to none participation, although I had one conversation with a participant and he wasn't exactly asking something. He, he just asked that, he commented that the video about compost was, didn't have all, all the details about all the aspects of compost production. And, of course, I explained to him that you cannot cover all the aspects of compost production in 15 minutes video and uh, that he could find uh, uh, all the necessary information he needed in the patches, in the web page, etc. And that, that was that actually. He, he, he just needed a more uh, a better package in that video. But, I mean, it would not be possible given the time and <laughs> uh, we had to spare on the video and the discussion. Uh, that, that was it, actually. Okay, Kibros, thank you for your, for your comments. We have started the workshop. Uh, for sure, the participation of the, of the people in the different sessions will be higher and higher. And uh, I didn't want to... to to finish this session without trying to contact uh, Professor Suarez for the question uh, that came from from the Italian group concerning the the, the, the quality of the of the compost to be used as suppressive uh, as a suppressive factor. Hello, Hagi. Hello. Finally, you, Hello. we got it. I'm in late for the discussion. I think. <laughs> But I had I had uh, I have problems with my micro again and with my camera. So uh, uh, the, the the question here is the the the, the, the quality of the product uh, really. What what is the the parameters the best parameters to decide which is the, the best compost? Uh, yeah. That is the question. Well, it is also if it is possible to to assure a, a, a suppressive effect against some specific pathogen or some specific nematodes. If this is possible to to be known before the obtention of the compost, uh, uh, depending on the 
origin of the of the organic matter used for the composting or you have you can add the microorganisms later in the compost you, if yeah. this is possible to prepare supersive compost really uh, it's uh, very very difficult to to predict to predict the supersive effect of the compost against uh, uh, some uh, microorganisms bacteria fungi fungus nematode it, it's very, very difficult to predict. But uh, I think uh, the most important at first to assure a uh, good effect of the, of the product, of, of, the, of the compost, uh, is uh, to, to control uh, basic parameters, basic parameters such as uh, phytotoxicity, such as respirometric index, for example, such as CN radio uh, or uh, um, humic compounds, because uh, if the compost is uh, good, more or less, uh, you have uh, more uh, probability uh, um, to, to have a positive effects uh, against the pathogen. Um, if you if you have uh, to know uh, uh, a specific effect uh, against um, a specific uh, phytopathogen, uh, you have uh, um, uh, previously uh, to to make uh, bioassays bioassays in seed plants in seed plants and to to corroborate to confirm the effect in little in little plants but it's very difficult to predict the the effect because there are a lot of uh, raw materials uh, different uh, uh, processes uh, different conditions uh, uh, could affect the the final quality of the of the compost. In this in this moment, at this moment, uh, our research group uh, we 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 need to know the relationship between the 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 usual uh, um, the usual and basic parameters of uh, of the compost and the biodiversity. We need to find a relationship between biodiversity of the compost and suppressive uh, effect. It's very difficult. Recently, we have uh, several studies uh, uh, in which uh, we are characterize the biodiversity of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, products, a lot of uh, compost from different raw materials, uh, vegetables, uh, oil wastes, agro wastes, slashes, and uh, mm, it, mm, each each uh, process, each product, it's very different. It's very different. And so uh, I, I, uh, we, we are now uh, mm, researching in this sense. Hmm. Th thank you very much. This uh, is a, one problem. Thank, thank you very much, Pakit, uh, for, uh, for, for being so clear, no? because sometimes it's necessary that from the science, from the practice, uh, someone tell us, okay, this is the real point now. And this is where we are. It is clear, and I will use this last, uh, uh, this last words as a, as a final conclusion for for this session because we are out of time. But just to, to finalize, uh, I, I want to to use these these words. The the, the compost is uh, a promising tool, as Alfred said. Uh, there is a, a huge demand of compost in uh, in all, all, all over Europe, but compost is uh, very heterogeneous. There is a high heterogeneity in compost depending on the material, depending on the processes. 
Jax Fuchs uh, has made a very good uh, approach to classify the different qualities of the compost from a, a nutritional point of view, from a security point of view. Now, uh, Paki uh, spoke about the bioassays. If we, we want to, to know if uh, a compost is suppressive, right now we only have one way to do it. It's through bioassays, testing with bioassays if there is a suppressiveness effect or not. And this is very hard to do in a, in a laboratory. This is not a, a simple analysis. But for sure, the science is advancing and all this microbiome and this biodiversity tools in the future will help, it, will help us at least to normalize the qualities of the compost. And for me, something very, very important, at least the security of the grower of the farmer when using a compost, that there is no pesticides residues, that there are no pathogens in the compost. And this is uh, quite, quite important if we want to, to be sure with the uh, with the with the use of compost thanks again for joining us uh, thanks to all the facilitators for their work we are leaf uh, this has been clear <laughs> this has been clearly stated in in this session in the in the stage in the sessions but finally uh, we know that soil are also living living uh, organisms or supra organisms and that's the, the point in, in our workshop. We want this uh, real uh, uh, interaction between the, the partners, between the facilitators, the participants, and the, and the specialists. We will follow on air this afternoon. We will continue with uh, more about organic matter, more about soil health, and uh, with uh, another trending topic that is biofumigation and biosolarization. The, the new session will start at uh, 2, 14, in, uh, in CIT, CET timing. Uh, this is one hour before in, in Cyprus and Greeks. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope to see you later uh, in a couple of, uh, <laughs> in, in, a, in a while. And uh, please have a rest and uh, we will continue with this uh, workshop uh, later. And uh, I wish you a, a good rest and uh, a good lunch. Bon appétit, as someone said there. See you later.